ready. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer at St George's Barbourne, Worcester and St John Baptist Claims on Facebook today. I am John Butterworth, a reader or local lay preacher at both churches and with me is my wife Jan. Hello. Wondering on what to reflect on today, Jan suggested I googled on Facebook and Google famous events on this day. I thought, well, there's no chance, there'll be nothing of interest. But you'd probably be shocked to know that this wasn't the first time I was wrong in my marriage. Because I looked on Google and first item on famous events today, February the 10th, was the arrival of Paul in Malta after being shipwrecked there this day, probably in 59 AD. So today is the 1962nd anniversary of when Paul landed on Malta, an event which is still celebrated every year on this beautiful Mediterranean island, and it will be celebrated today. I thought it was appropriate, therefore, to remember that event today, hence the appropriate reading from the end of the book of Acts, chapter 27, and part of Acts, chapter 28. Let's start our time of so let's start our time of worship with a song of joy. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. All glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So our reading is from Acts chapter 27 and starts at verse 39 and goes on to chapter 8, verse 16. Now when it was day after the long storm, the ship's crew did not recognise the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea at the same time loosening the ropes that tied the rudders. Then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made it to the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable, and the stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners on board, lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump aboard first and make for the land and rest on planks or on pieces of the ship. And so it was that they were all brought safely to land. After they were brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us an unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all, because it had begun to rain and was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, 
though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Now in the neighbourhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery, and Paul visited him and prayed, putting his hands on him and healed him. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They also honoured us greatly, and when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. It was after three months when we set sail in a ship that had wintered on the island, a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a figurehead. Putting in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. And from there we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. And after one day a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Puteoli. There we found brothers, and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with one soldier who guarded him. Thank you, Jan. Probably like many of you, Jan and I have been fortunate to visit this historical destination of Malta with its fascinating sights, lovely architecture and sandy beaches. Probably like you, we visited St Paul's Bay, where Paul is believed to have landed after being shipwrecked off St Paul's Island, where there is a statue of Paul to commemorate his visits. Also, you may have gone to St Paul's Grotto in Rabat, where he first took refuge, and the Cathedral of Medina, in which is believed to have been built on the site of the home of Publius, the chief Roman representative on the island, where his father had been healed by Paul of a fever and dysentery. I wonder what Paul was thinking after that horrendously long journey from Caesarea, the violent storms on the way, the shipwreck, having to swim to safety, and then when landing on the island being bitten by a poisonous snake. If you remember, his real destination was Rome, the centre of the empire, where he wanted to take the gospel to. He was heading there after a vision from God that he would appear before Emperor Nero, the most powerful man in the ancient world at that time. If you remember, Paul had used his right as a Roman citizen to appeal to the emperor after he'd been arrested and had a number of trials for allegedly taking a Gentile too far into the holy temple precincts. If I was Paul, I'd be asking God, why on earth have we got this untimely detour? Is it part of your plan? I don't understand why there's all this necessary or necessary delay. It's going to take me even longer to reach Rome now. I have no plans for an untimely stop on this little island in the middle of the Mediterranean. But look what happened. The Roman colony became the first island in the empire to be Christian. Paul had a huge effect on that island and the leader Publius, who in Paul's words entertained them hospitably for three days, was very moved by the visit of Paul. The to eat Paul of course, healed Publius's father and many other sick people who came and were healed by Paul. The Maltese, who had been very suspicious of Paul when he first arrived, were so convinced by him and so thankful for his visit that they restocked his ship for the onward journey to Rome. 
Paul's visit has led to 2,000 years of Christianity on Malta and the anniversary of Paul's arrival is still remembered today by the Maltese who hold a feast day and a national holiday every year on February the 10th. I wonder what would have happened to Malta and the Roman chief if Paul hadn't made that painful detour. Back in 1972, I had a painful detour. I fluffed my A-levels that year and went back for a third year in the sixth form at Newcastle, Newcastle High School in the Potteries. I got much better A-level second time round. But during that year, I often asked God, why have I gone on this painful detour? Why have I wasted a year of my life? Looking back, it was totally understandable because that year changed my life. Instead of going to Birmingham University to study social sciences as originally planned, I instead went on the Daily Mirror training scheme and became a journalist for the next 44 years which I thoroughly enjoyed. Even more importantly, in that third year sixth, I started going out with a girl from the nearby local girls grammar school. This July, Jan and I celebrate our 45th wedding anniversary. It was a detour, a year that changed my life, but I'm so glad that God took me on that detour. I wonder how are you coping with lockdown? Like you maybe, I could cope with the first two lockdowns, but the third one is the tough one, with our trip to South Africa to see our family and grandchildren being cancelled again. That was January this year, and so we're going to hope for third time later on in the year. Why this unnecessary delay, God, I asked again. What's the point of this lockdown? And when is it ever going to end? When's this storm going to finish? I and everybody else may have been taken by surprise by this pandemic and lockdown, but God wasn't. I believe this detour and painful experience is part of God's plan for us and for his church. And he can use us, and he can use you and me, just as he did with Paul on that anniversary day nearly 2,000 years ago. But we need to adapt to this new way of life. As Rev Joe reminded us at St George's and Clains, and we and many other churches in the land are reaching through to new people through Facebook services. People we possibly might not have reached under the old system. How am I? How are you going to serve God in this new system? This crisis of lockdown? Interestingly, back in 1986, I've always been fascinated with forbidden countries. And I was fortunate in 1986 when China was just opening up to the rest of the world to be invited on an official visit. Fascinating trip took us to parts of China that are still off the tourist route. It was a brilliant insight into the country. I learnt a few smattering words of Mandarin. One I have never forgotten is this. This is the Chinese word for crisis, made up of two symbols. The first symbol means danger and the second means opportunity. And I think that is an absolute brilliant definition of a crisis. It's a dangerous opportunity and it gives us a chance to try new things. It's not going to be easy, could be dangerous, but it is an opportunity. Like Paul, we are travelling through uncharted waters now in the church. There are storms and there are problems on this detour, but God is with us and he wants us to serve him in new ways. What should we do? Well, one idea might be to join St George's and Clains for our online course every Monday night for the next week next eight weeks. We're starting on Monday, February the 22nd at 7.30 when we're going to study Living His Story, the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book for 2021, written by Hannah Steele, the daughter of uh, David uh, and Alex New in our church. It uncovers 
liberating and practical ways of sharing the gospel story afresh. If you're interested, do contact our vicar, the Reverend Joe Musson, for more details. And of course, you can join us every Sunday on Facebook for our service at a joint service at 10.30. There are dangerous opportunities at this time, but be encouraged. Lockdown will end one day and we will enjoy a celebration and a feast as we meet together again, just as the Maltese do every year on this anniversary day, February the 10th, the arrival of Paul and the Gospel on the island of Malta. Amen. So reflecting on that, let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning knowing it's your desire to listen and delight in us as we pray to you for ourselves and for others. Sometimes we know your presence is in us and surrounds us, but at other times we feel empty and fearful. Whatever we feel, may we trust in you, our provider, our comfort, who strengthens us in times of struggle and knows and understands each inch of our being. Lord, help us to respond as Paul did, to use each situation to glorify you, telling of your sacrificial love. Remembering that even though he was a prisoner, shipwrecked and diverted from his desire to get to Rome, he didn't falter, but used the time to preach to those in authority and plant a new and lasting church in Malta in the few months while they waited for the storm to pass. May we, Lord, use this time in the pandemic to explore new ways of deepening our faith, reaching out to you in praise and praying for others, knowing that deep joy can be with us whatever the circumstances. And so we pray for those who are finding this lockdown so difficult. At each prayer point, join with me to pray the names of people you know in this situation to yourselves. So we pray for those in isolation who want to tear down the walls and weep for a life that's being changed, where lockdown brings back memories of past hurts and abuse for those who've given up on hope. We pray for those who feel empty, poured out through the pressures of working and homeschooling, or just in need of space as the family crowds in together. We continue to pray for those who are working on the front line, who are stressed and exhausted and for healing for those who are sick, scared, or in a slow recovery, for the dying, and for those who have been bereaved. We remember those who have no one to tell of how desperate they are feeling. May all these people, loved by you, know your touch this morning Receive your protection and comfort and strength for endurance. Lord, move us to know how to respond to the huge needs around us, filling us with your spirit, giving us hope to share with others and to reflect your love in all we do. We ask these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Amen. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty God in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray and feel free to pray this with us in your home today. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for this short time of worship this morning. Do join us again on Sunday at 10.30 on Facebook and do join us next Wednesday morning at 10.30 and of course we hope to see you at the Lent course on Monday evening at 7.30 week on Monday. Thank you, may God bless you and be with each one of us today and for the rest of the week. Amen.